to write your first draft, and I'm so proud of you for getting this far. This video is going to give you some reminders and some hints on how to write this first draft, so you just have to write it one time and not have to go back and fix too much stuff. So some things your first draft, draft needs to have. First, it needs to be longer than two pages. So, you know, you've got your, your heading on the first page and your title and your intro paragraph, and then a paragraph or two on the first page. You have to have a full second page that probably has like four or five paragraphs, and then probably one page, paragraph on the third page. You have to have at least a little on the third page. However, five pages is the maximum. You have to stop at the bottom of the fifth page. And if you go long, uh, I'll tell you how, it, how to fix that in a little bit, but just know that when you turn in your first draft, longer than two pages, but shorter than six. This does not include the works cited page. You need a works cited page and it's gonna be an extra piece of paper or you know if you're if you have this in Google Docs another page. So if you have a maximum paper of five pages, the works cited is on the sixth. If you have a minimum paper of two and a bit, works cited page is on the fourth page. You definitely need an introductory and concluding paragraph and both of those need a thesis statement. I will give you video reminders on how to do those. It needs to be in formal tone. I'm also going to include video about that. And it needs to be in MLA formatting. Uh, and I'll give you a video on that. But it will be 12 point font, Times New Roman, double spaced, one inch margins. Remember which level you're writing so that you know how long your paper needs to be. Uh, the wizard level should be on the fifth piece of paper. In fact, it should be most of the fifth piece of paper, fifth page. Pirate level can be four or five, but no library books. Both of those are due before Easter. The ninja level can be three or four pages with library books, but due after Easter. And the Jedi level, more than two pages, so a little on the third page, but no library books. Okay, so keep those things in mind. Now, if your paper is short, please do not just add a bunch of adjectives and say he was really, 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 really fast. Instead, go back to your sources and find more facts. Um, it's, I, it might help you to add it to your outline, but you don't need to. If your paper is long, well, this is a chance to do a really good writing exercise, which is, let's say your paper's first draft is seven pages. I want you to keep every fact, but go through each sentence and think, how can I say this more succinctly and briefly? How can I use strong vocabulary instead of rambling phrases? And how can I get rid of adjectives and prepositional phrases that aren't necessary? I know it's hard, but you can do it and you'll be a better writer for it. Always keep in mind that this is a persuasive essay. Imagine that I don't think your person's very great, but you are gonna prove to me that your person is the greatest. You know, so I might, I might say, I don't like comic books and I don't think Stan Lee is special. Your job is to convince me that Stan Lee was the greatest. And I might not think that, um, I don't know, that, that Nancy Reagan or Michelle Obama were great first ladies, but you're gonna prove me wrong. Um, and that if you attack it that way, you're always gonna be using facts as evidence and you're gonna be focusing on what makes them great. And that's gonna be a much better paper. Now, uh, if you've got a good outline, good news, the first draft is a cinch because every line on the outline becomes a sentence in the first draft. Let me show you. So on the left is an outline and on the right is this student's first draft. So we will worry about the introductory paragraph later. In fact, I'd rather you write the intro and concluding paragraphs last after you know what to in, what you're introducing. But what I want you to know is every fact next to the numbers is gonna become a sentence, maybe two, you know, sometimes you can combine short sentences, that's okay. But for the most part, every fact next to a one, two, three, four, five, six, that's gonna become a sentence. However, everything next to a capital letter, that's gonna become a topic sentence. Like, you know, Winston Churchill spent much of his youth in military school. That was, that's, you know, because uh, capital letter B says military school. 
And now furthermore, uh, and I, the, th the things next to the Roman numerals, that's your subtopic. Do not make a little mini chapter title for your subtopic. Instead, just make a topic sentence for the subtopic. And that topic sentence, you know, child to young man, becomes the first sentence of a body paragraph, which means the first paragraph of each subtopic actually has two topic sentences, one for the subtopic and one for the paragraph. And believe me, it, it sounds like it would be confusing to the reader, but it's not. So this student's first subtopic is child to man, which becomes Winston Churchill's childhood, helps prepare him for positions in government and the army. And then the topic sentence for the first paragraph comes next. Though he had a difficult childhood, there's his early life, Winston still persevered to succeed later in life. And then each fact becomes a sentence. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. Just know every item on the outline becomes a sentence. A couple things to think about. First, uh, when your person is living with their parents, when they're a child, you're going to call them by their first name because, you know, if you are writing about, um, uh, if, if you're writing about Abraham Lincoln, well, everyone in that house is named Lincoln. If you just call them Lincoln, it's not going to make sense. So call them Abraham. However, as soon as the person leaves their parents' house and goes off to college or working or the real world, you can call them by their first and last name, Abraham Lincoln, or their last name, Lincoln. Please do not call them Abe or Abraham uh, because you're not friends with them. So it's a show of respect. Next, if your person has a nickname, like uh, Muhammad Ali was born Cassius Clay, and uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was born Lou Alcindor, use their use their birth name until they get until they change their name. Okay, so if you're you know I had a student write about Madonna, um, she's not Madonna until she's in her twenties and she starts singing, then she can be called Madonna. If your person got married and changed her name, then you can start using her uh, full name, including her new name, after they get married, after she gets married. Okay. Please remember, ideas are grouped into paragraphs. So you're going to have a paragraph about your person, um, you know, uh, protesting for the right to vote, or a paragraph about joining the, the NFL, or a paragraph about um, living with chimpanzees but your paragraphs should go in chronological order. So if while, you're, if while your person is playing in the NFL and then they get married, so start a new paragraph, have your person get married and have kids, and then go back to the NFL. Um, do not wait until the end of the paper or discuss marriage when the person at the beginning of your paper when they're still a child. That can be weird. Uh, and then my, my most common thing is don't, don't have your person die until the end of the paper. In fact, for most of your, per, your for most of your papers, the last paragraph will be a concluding paragraph. The second to last paragraph is like legacy, where the, the lasting impression they left on the world and who they influenced. And then the third to last paragraph is where they die. Okay? So ideas are grouped into paragraphs, but the paragraphs are in chronological order, according to time. As you're writing, never skip a line. We skip a line when we hit the enter key twice, and you're never going to do that. Because when you are done writing the, the heading, hit enter once, center it, and write the title. Then hit the enter key once, indent, and write the first line. And at the end of a paragraph, hit enter key once, indent, and start the new paragraph. Uh, Never skip lines between paragraphs. When you get to the last paragraph of your paper and you want your works cited page on the next page, just use a page break. I showed you how in the video on the works cited page, but please do not just hit enter a bunch of times, excuse me, I have hiccups, a bunch, a bunch of times, because if you add or subtract a line in editing, 
then that shifts your works cited page around. Okay, and then lastly, do not skip lines between works cited entries. That's why the first line of each works cited entry is on the margin and all the other ones are indented. So it stands out. Remember your formal tone. Now in this, uh, you know, or I will be asking you to, to watch the formal tone lesson again, but just some reminders. In the hook, you could be casual because you can write a personal story or a joke uh, or, or a question, like a riddle. In the reference to the hook, because that connects to the hook and it's like finishes your anecdote or finishes your joke. And in quotes. So if you quote somebody, whether it's a dialogue from your person or a quote from one of your sources, you can be casual. But when it's your sentences in the body of your essay, including the thesis statement, no personal pronouns like I, you, he, she, we, no, sorry, I, you, we, or us, um, you, it is okay to say he and she. In fact, you're probably going to say he or she, depending on the gender of your person, a lot, and that's okay. No contractions like can't, won't, or don't. No slang, uh, you know, see your notes from the formal tone lesson. No rhetorical questions. Please do not ask me any questions while I'm reading because you don't want me answering. Because if I answer, it's going to be with a big red pen all over your paper. Don't say things like, why, you know, why would he leave home? Or why would he do that? Just don't. Just say it. Next, no commands. Oh, oof. do not say, now you know everything there is to know about Amelia Earhart. No, I don't. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. You're not my dad. So uh, don't. no commands. Don't tell the reader what to do. Don't have the paper talk about itself. Like earlier in this paper, you know, it was written that Amelia Earhart took flying lessons. Don't do it. You know, you can just say after she took flying lessons. And then lastly, remember that if a number can be written in one or two words, use the words unless it's money, an address, or sports scores, or something like that. Oops. Okay, so uh, a lot of students ask, where do I begin a new paragraph? And the answer is, oops, I'm having a little, Here, I'll just do it this way. The answer is, every time there's a capital letter, that's where you're going to start a new paragraph. So when this student's done writing about uh, uh, Stevie Wonder's family, enter, tab, and start writing about education. Now, you're obviously going to start a new paragraph when it's a new uh, subtopic, like the music career, but remember, when you Start, when you start a new subtopic, you're going to take the music career, make it a topic sentence for the subtopic, and just add it to the net to the first paragraph of the subtopic. So something about music career, something about debut, and then the rest of the paragraph, that's all one paragraph. But when you're done writing about his him playing piano, drums, and harmonica, hit enter, hit tab, and then new paragraph. Speaking of which, um, I know the iPad does not have a tab, and I was hoping that you would have a, an external keyboard. This is something we talked about at the beginning of the year. Don't go buy an external keyboard just for this assignment. But when you're done writing your first draft on your iPad, and if you don't if you don't have a keyboard, well, your ta your indents are probably just five spaces on the on this on the hitting the space bar. When you're done with your first draft please open your Google Doc on a computer. Maybe ask your parent to use their laptop or something. And go through and make every paragraph begin with an indent using the tab key, because a tab key is, is precisely half an inch, and five spaces is not. Okay, so that's a little advice for you. So keep those things in mind as you write. Um, but if you've got an awesome outline, you're going to be surprised how easy it is to write this first draft. Good luck. Let me know if you need help.